Hey Flosstube, how you guys doing? Lori here, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. This video is about a cross-stitching obsession, hobby, addiction, whatever you want to call it. It all kind of works and don't send help because I'm happy with it. So anyways, hi guys. Um, it's been a minute since I've seen you, you know, not too long. I just went on my trip to Florida not too terribly long ago. So, you know, you guys knew I was going to be gone for a little bit. So, but I've missed you. I do have a fair bit of stuff to report to you guys. I kept putting this video off because I've got some fun mail on the way and I kept waiting for it, but I'm like, if I wait for all of it, the video is going to get really long and I think this video might get a little long. I mean, potential, but we'll see. Um, you guys already know how long it's going to be, so yay, future time for you guys. But anyways, pretty much what I'm going to go over in this video is I'm going to go over some whips. Um, I have a happy dance, so that's kind of fun. Um, I've got a little bit of haul. Um, Gotta have a little chit chat about some Swarovski stuff. <laughs> That'll be fun. Uh, a little cranky about that. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, then I'm going to go over some plans for future videos. And yeah, because we're getting kind of to the end of 2020, you know, like 2021. 2020, like, it's, let's pretend it just didn't happen. How about that? So, anyways, thank you guys for stopping in with me. I've missed you, like I said. Um, my trip. I won't go too much into detail about it, but you know, I'll let you know how it went. We had fun. Weather was pretty good the whole time. Um, I got to see some sharks, you know, which is always a fun thing. Uh, got to do some snorkeling. Got to see lots of iguanas, lots of lizards running around. So that was a lot of fun. The kid had fun too. So yeah, and it was kind of nice because like <laughs> when I was down there in Key West particularly, there's a couple people that live down there that apparently are very into Halloween because their houses were decked out, like, and it's middle of September, so, like, they were ready. And I remember feeling kind of bad for them because I'm like, oh, you guys don't get, like, the pumpkin patches and the turning leaves and all that fun stuff. I mean, at least I don't know that there's pumpkin patches down in Florida. I mean, I could be wrong. But I thought, oh, you poor guys. But when I came back to Ohio, you know, where we get all seasons and summer is typically the shortest, um, I was ready to accept the arrival of fall. You know, like, I fall is my favorite season, but here in Ohio, it's kind of short. Like, we're pretty much in winter for six months of the year, which is not my favorite season. Um, I don't care too much for spring either because it's just muddy, rainy, and kind of gross. And uh, the only upside is it is getting warmer again. Um, I like summer for the sun and the plants and the warmth. <laughs> um, fall I love for the colors, the smells in the air. Halloween's my favorite holiday. Uh, I love the leaves. I love kind of, I don't know, I just, I love the air, but I also, it's so bittersweet because winter's coming and it's not going to leave for a long time. So, but yeah, so I was like ready to say, okay, summer, it's been fun, but now it's time for fall. So, <laughs> which is appropriate because my whip is Autumn Dusk by Shadowland Designs. And I will show you guys that in a little bit. Um, I did think I would show you a few things like here's this cute little sharky thing I got while I was in um, Key Largo is where I got this and it's this little tile and it's this art design or it's like a tile from a painting it's a little hammerhead shark and then you have a sweet little face I just think he's so cute this wood for the frame is made out of a lobster trap apparently and it was kind of funny I bought this in a gift shop it was like a visitor center tourist information it was like right near one of our hotels uh, when we were in the Everglades and we were getting ready to go to one of you know like we stopped in there because i wanted to take a look at the maps and they had this rack with a bunch of these little paintings this one's called bite me which i thought was funny and it's like oh local artist you know and i thought okay well that's cool you know because i kind of like original stuff but let me tell you this artist makes a lot of shit because they were all over the place in the key so i felt like okay not as original as I thought it was going to be, but to be fair, I did not see this little guy ever again. I only saw him the first time when I got him, and I was like, well, of course I have to have him. He's too cute. I didn't get to see any hammerhead sharks. Whoops, sorry. Making you guys seasick there. Um, I didn't get to see any hammerhead sharks, but I did get to see some nurse sharks and some lemon sharks. So, yeah, the, I posted those on my Instagram. While I'm showing you that picture, I figured I would show you guys this. Maybe some of you guys have noticed it and been like, what the heck is that? And it kind of fits in the theme with the channel a little bit because um, 
Some of you guys may stitch Hate or Heaven and Earth designs. One artist that has her designs commissioned there is Stephanie Law. She is my favorite artist. She works in watercolors and some other mixed media in there. She is amazing. I love her. I have several of her originals. Um, one of my tattoos on my back, uh, she I commissioned her to draw it for me. Um, she's just amazing. Her tarot deck is so cool if you're into like tarot or anything. So, but you know, she has some cross stitch designs and actually the only Hade designs I have are hers and I don't think I'll ever finish them because it's like doing nonstop over one, which is not my favorite. But this is one of her, um, she did a painting and then she like laser cuts a frame to fit it because she likes organic shapes and like things that don't fit in like a perfect square. And look how pretty it's a mermaid. And this is the original painting and she's got some gold leaf that she's added and then she's poured resin over top. So I'm trying to keep the glare off. And you can feel a jellyfish right there. And the detail's not showing. This tail is actually like, there's some kind of a pearly color over it. Maybe you can see it a little bit, not really. But isn't she gorgeous? I just love the textures and like, this is done with watercolor. Like she just makes it so luminous. So, but yeah, her website is shadowscapes.com. So if you're interested, go check that out. But yeah, I just thought I'd share, share that since it's kind of occupying space in the background there. So yeah, okay, now let's get into like the legit stitching stuff. So um, I'll go over the haul first. Um, so let me see here. Um, let's go into the Swarovskis. Because one of the last videos I posted was kind of a parade of my sparkle hoard um, with Swarovskis. And when I came back from my Florida trip, I had held my mail. And some of the mail was some Swarovskis I had ordered before I left. So let's go into the happy portions first. So I wanted to show you a couple colors that I got that are really pretty. And I'm getting a card here so I can show it to y'all. So, um, one of my favorite colors is the Fire Opal. Fire Opal as a color. It's not like an opal, like the cloudy looking crystals. And I found on, I think it was on an Etsy site, and I think it came from, uh, flew out of my head, Singapore. There we go. <laughs> and it was Fire Opal AB times two, which I hadn't seen too often. I thought, well, it looks kind of cool. Oh, it is so cool. Oh my God, I love it. And when I ordered it, I only ordered about like that much. So as soon as I came home and I opened the package and it kind of came in like kind of container like this, I was like, oh my God, I need more of those like now. <laughs> so I found more and I got a full container of them and this was like wouldn't fit in the container. So yeah, I just got those in there. So yes, I needed more of those. I'll get in why I need more of those soon. Um, okay, and then here's another color. Um, this one was a later purchase. And this is one that this one makes me kind of sad because like it came in this package and it's got the color handwritten. It's scar scarabius green, like scarab beetle green. It's kind of hard to pronounce. Scara scarabus green. I scarabus. It uh, it's a color name. <laughs> but it's really cool. So it's kind of like a darker jet, but like one half of the bead has this like reflective peacocky color and the other half is clear with like a rainbow effect, but it's just really pretty. So I like it, but it's usually when I get my containers, uh, it usually has like a sticker label on it and then I can cut that off and apply it to my container, you know, and it's nice legible you know, typed stuff, but this was handwritten. So I'm either, my handwriting's not the best, but I'm either gonna have to handwrite something myself or get a teeny tiny little label maker and make my own label for it. So that's why it's still in the bag. That, and this is, there's 72 in here. And I would kind of like more because when I get 72, this is about the volume we're looking at. It's about half full. A full container for me typically is like 144. So, but when I'm buying a color I don't have before, I usually buy 72 because that's like enough to play with. 
you know, but when it's a color that I'm like, oh my God, I love that. And I know I'm probably going to reach for it a lot. That's when I want a full container like the fire opals. And I'm kind of thinking I might like a full container of these guys too. So, but this color I don't see very often. Like I had seen it a couple times and I thought that's cool, but it's kind of similar to stuff I already had. Well, I finally just decided just get it because you keep looking at it. So I did and I like it. Okay. Um, this color was really cool. And this was another one that I'm like, what is that? Like, Looking at the name, it didn't really strike me as anything, but like the picture that the seller had, and I got this one off Etsy, um, the picture I was just like, and there, I think there was even a video, which is gold if you're shopping for crystals that you're not sure what the color is, and I was like, those look really cool, so I just went for them, and oh my god, this is Crystal Clear ABST. I'm not sure what the ABST stands for. Um, I'm, a, I'm assuming this is a special finish and from looking at the other abbreviations of some of those special finishes, I'm thinking it is either AB Starshine or AB Satin. I'm kind of leaning towards the satin, so it doesn't look satiny, but whatever. So here's what that looks like. Isn't that those pretty? So these are kind of like this scarabus green color. Like one half of the crystal is the yellows and the blue and the greens. The other half is like clear with those colors. So I don't know, it's just really cool. Kind of wish this would have been in the drool with me video because it's just, I really liked it. And I was, I had ordered a lot of it just because I'd never seen it before. So I was like, if that's something cool, you know, like, so, but I really liked that one. Okay. So before I show you the next new color I got that I'm like, oh my God, I love that color so much. Um, let's go into the Swarovski stuff. So basically when I came home and I had all these Swarovskis, including the fire opals, which I didn't buy the fire opal, um, AB times two on fire mountain gems, my usual <laughs> dealer. <laughs> uh, I got those off Etsy, but I, when I wanted more, I was like, okay, I'm going to go order more. And then I came across a color that the seller had that I already had. And I was like, you know, I don't have very much of that. I probably should get some more. But then I thought, ah, oh, let me go check Fire Mountain Gems. Well, when I did that, basically, when you click on Swarovski Crystals on Fire Mountain Gems as of now, which today is September 28th, you get this screen that basically says, we're not selling Swarovski Crystals anymore unless you fill out this vendor agreement. Like there's this form for like vendors and they, I guess they would only sell it to you in bulk or something. And I took a look at the form and it looked like it was mostly for like designers or retail stores, kind of like, let's say European cross stitch, who's kidding, you know, like the Chatelaine mandalas and the kits that have a lot of the crystals in them. And so, yeah. And then I was like, okay, Let's take a look at Art Beads and see what they're doing. Pretty much same thing. You can click on Swarovski and then you get the same page. And apparently there's some stores like which Art Beads and Fire Mountain Gems are both on this list to where they're like wholesale. They've been chosen as wholesale providers. But basically a small fish, you know, who just want like 144 crystals and not like 10,000, <laughs> you know, we're basically cut off from our dealers. So I had a mini panic and I was like ready to like run and film a video and be like, holy fuck, oh my God, what am I going to do? But then I was like, you know, they've kind of been talking about this for a little bit. Also, like I am not a representative, you know, and I don't want to spread panic, you know? So, I mean, I'm panicking just because I'm addicted to the crystals and the sparkle and all that, you know, I'm like a dragon squatting on my hoard. So I was freaking out, but I didn't want to spread the freak out. So I just thought, cool your jets, calm down about the whole thing and just mention it in your next floss tube. And I thought I want to mention it with a ray of hope. <laughs> so, um, some things that I ordered from some Etsy shops were Preciosa crystals, which have been suggested as an alternative for Swarovski. And I actually found a crystal that is the exact same color as a Swarovski crystal that I have, and I like it better. So with that, let me show it to you. Where did I put my car? Oh, 
here it is, duh. So here is Violet, AB times two, Swarovski. So yeah, it's cool. And it's AB times two, so you see lots of that blue flashiness on it. And as you can see, I don't have a full container. That's because when I got this color, I was like, meh. I'm like it's, it's, I like it, but there's other colors I like better. So, and I was looking for more like a true purple. Like I felt like the blue kind of came in on this one too much. So then I ordered same exact color, violet, AB times two in Preciosa. And I'm pretty sure it looks like it's pretty true on the camera. Look how much flashier that is. And I feel like it's more purple. The flash isn't blue. You know, it's more like a rainbow. And as you can see, I got a fuller container of it because I like it better. So yeah, this is a Preciosa and this is a Swarovski and I like the Preciosa better. So Preciosas, which you can still get off Fire Mountain Gems. Maybe a good alternative. Now they do have some colors that I'm like not familiar with. And some of them I'm like, oh great. Here's another little rabbit hole, you know, cause like here's this color that I picked up, Aqua Bohemica PH. I'm like, well, that's a pretty color. It's kind of like a blue green aqua, a little bit more greenish than blue though, but that's cool. So I like that. Preciosa again. Um, and then here's these weird, which I didn't think Swarovski had any like these. These are Preciosa, and they are two colors that I'm fond of. One's Deep Tanzanite, the other one's Sapphire. AB1 Matte. So they have kind of this cool sea glass opal look to them, which I thought was kind of cool. You know, and this, this one's really, see how you can kind of see, it's almost like fish scales. And those are Preciosas. Now, um, let me see if you can see. The one thing that I kind of noticed about these, and maybe it's the matte finish, but um, if you know anything about um, meat points, like when someone's faceting a gemstone, uh, one way you can tell if it's a good cut is by looking at the meat points. You want the meat points to be very, like, perfect, shall we say, not like off center. It's kind of like if you're building a house, you want all the walls to be straight, you know, if you have a wall that's not quite straight, it doesn't meet, you know, the ceiling very well, like that kind of thing. I noticed with the Preciosas, at least these kind, some of the meat points look a little messy and I'm trying to see where I can show that to you guys a little bit. So I feel like the meat points are a little bit nicer on the Swarovski but I only really noticed it on these ones. So maybe it's not that big a deal that, and I'm kind of nitpicky about stuff like that. So don't make my issues your issues. <laughs> I can be neurotic. Okay, and here's two more Preciosa colors that I got that I just thought I'd show you just for fun. I got Amethyst Opal AB, which is very close to Cyclamen Opal AB. Um, I've noticed Opal AB, Cyclamen and Amethyst and Swarovski look like the same color, basically. And I think the Preciosa, like I could throw that probably in with my Cyclamen Opal AB times one. And I don't think you'd even notice which ones were which. And this is Colorado Topaz AB times two. It's kind of a different color. Um, I don't really like the Topaz color in the plain Topaz. I like the light Topaz. This is light Colorado Topaz. Um, so I don't really like the regular Topaz and Swarovski, but I, I liked this color. So I may not be able to get my Swarovskis, but I can still get some bling. So I'm trying not to panic too much, but there's that kind of a Swarovski update. Your girl's been cut off, <laughs> but we shall prevail, you know, and I will adapt, overcome, go with the flow. So that's the Swarovski news. That's the Swarovski haul. I did get lots of other different little crystals. I also topped up a couple ones that I really liked because when I realized I was cut off from my main dealers, I hit Etsy pretty hard, which there's a lot of different sellers on Etsy. And some of them I noticed were selling like a large quantity and of Swarovski crystals. Like we're talking like a thousand and a lot or something like that. So I wonder if some of them are getting rid of them or I don't even know if maybe they were told like, hey, you can't sell these no more. I don't know how that works. But yeah, so I was 
just kind of like, I'm just going to top off my favorites, you know, that I don't have a whole lot of and that I want more of. So I just, yeah, just because it makes me feel better. <laughs> so the hoard has been updated. The hoard will still continue to grow. I will never stop buying sparklies. So, but I just wanted to address that, you know, like these Preciosa Violet AB types too. They are so pretty. I do really like those. So that's good news from bad news. All right, so more haul. Um, I went to Joann's to buy some floss for a design, and wouldn't you know, it ended up dropping like $100. <laughs> so I was buying the floss for this gal. She was one that I was planning on taking with me to Florida because she's a beach witch. Why not? Perfect, right? But because she has such a long floss list <laughs> and she's supposed to be stitched on perforated paper and she's got all these other components on perforated paper that are supposed to be like attached to her and I'm like that's kind of a lot and I realized I wasn't going to be able to take my straightening iron with me and I love using my straightening iron on my flosses so I um elected not to take any stitching so but I am still doing her and I think I want to get her started soon so I bought all the floss for her I will show you I'm planning on doing her on fabric and then doing her little accessories on perforated paper and attaching them to the fabric because I would kind of like to frame it. So here's the fabric and the floss that I bought. And I think it's going to look pretty on here. There are a couple sandy colors in here, but most of them are in places where I think it'll still show up just fine. So yeah, so there's also a bunch of metallics that go into this and I have placed an order with one, two, three stitch and those are on the way along with some other stuff, <laughs> but you'll see that next video. So that was the floss that I went to Joann's to get. What else did I leave with? Well, this one was slightly practical. So I got a crafting child as well. well child, he's 20, you know, but other person that lives in my house, he's got his own crafts to do. So sometimes my fabric scissors, go missing and then I get cranky <laughs> um they're at least not he knows better than to touch these ones these are like my sacred you know my baby but I was needing some new fabric scissors just because I got tired of the whole borrowing thing and I'm like I just need a new pair of fabric scissors and I found this one and I was like oh my god it looks like the ocean so I bought it so yeah now I got new fabric scissors um and it came in a two pack and there was like another pair of scissors but yeah I squirreled them away just in case those walk and I did tell him don't you touch those <laughs> you know so and they're for fabric only and then I was watching um oh a floss tube channel her name is x stitch md cross stitch md I could be wrong you guys know I'm terrible with names um I'll try to correct it but Basically, she's a doctor, she does cross stitch, she does a lot of samplers, and she also does some knitting. Well, she was posting, and I follow her on Instagram too, and she had posted this shawl, which when she posted it, I was like, oh, I like that. And she had knitted it, you know. And then she, when she had it in her video, it just, it looks so yummy. And I love scarves and stuff like that. And I've always wanted to learn how to knit. My mom tried showing me once, and I just got frustrated and gave up, and knitting kind of was with the quilting for me because my mom's a big quilter and she kind of really wants me to quilt but I was like nay nay like I do not need another addiction I'm already hoarding all these Swarovskis and Chatelaine kits and Mirabilia's and fabrics like I do not need another addiction to feed so I have been resisting the quilting that and quilting kind of takes up a lot more space like you kind of need to be able to spread out and I don't really have that much room right now I mean I'm working on renovating things I've actually renovated or not renovated rearranged this room and now it works so much better and I'm like what the heck was wrong I know you guys can't tell nothing back here really changed yet that's a work in progress back there but um what I changed here oh my god it works so much better and maybe quilting is a little more possible now than I thought it was but anyways Went off on a tangent there. Sorry, I do that. But I have, after I saw her video and I saw that lovely shawl and I was like, ooh, maybe, just maybe, you know, 
I can dabble, just dabble because, okay, this is funny to me. I'm in the knitting section and I kind of had some nostalgia because I'm going through the knitting section and there's all, you know, these, it's, it's more than just needles and yarn. There's all these other little things. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell any of this stuff is. <laughs> and that kind of led to me wanting to feel a little bit like overwhelmed, intimidated, oh, you know, but then I, a little voice kind of was like, do you remember back in the day when maybe you could walk down the cross stitch aisle and feel the same way? And I don't know, it just kind of gave me a wave of nostalgia. And I kind of was like, remember this, maybe in two years, you'll walk down this aisle and know exactly what all this shit is, you know? So I don't know, it was kind of, it was kind of fun. And it was like, this is, it's like learning another language, you know? So which when you look at these books, which mm, I flipped through this book, this is a beginner guide for a loom, you know, like, so like baby steps knitting. And I was just flipping through this and knitting. I don't speak knitting language. I look at like a pattern for knitting and I'm like, what is that? And <laughs> this is a beginner book. And if you don't like cursing, uh, prepare yourself. I fired a warning shot. So it's coming, but look at this. I looked at that and I wonder if you're looking at that. All I could think is what the fuck is that shit? What is that? I've had bowls of spaghetti that make more sense than that. And this is a beginner book. Like what the hell is that shit? <laughs> you know? And I'm, I, I'm like, mm, okay, well, we're not starting on page 25. So mm -hmm. now maybe some of you are knitters and you're looking at that and you're like, oh, well, obviously that's a cable with a rib stitch, you know, whatever, you know, maybe that makes perfect sense to you. I kind of hope maybe someday I'll look at that and be like, duh, girl, that's totally this, you know? So maybe that's something for future me to understand. But, you know, it's funny because this kind of reminds me of like an anatomy book. If you've ever taken cadaver labs or like, you know, physiology labs or anything like that. And you look in the book and it makes like the dissection look so neat and clean. And oh, clearly this is a kidney and clearly this is this, you know? And then you get the actual thing you're dissecting and you're like, it don't look nothing like that. So I'm like, is this just an example? Because usually like computer generated diagrams like this, I feel like they make things look way more simple. So I'm like, are you guys just like, okay, we're gonna make this look as real as we can because I'm like, I can imagine it really looking like that, but usually the book makes things look a little bit more simple, but I'm like, I can't see what's going anywhere. None of it makes sense and uh, send help, please. <laughs> so um, I picked that up. It was also on sale too. That and um, it's got four fun projects and I really like the mittens. I love fingerless gloves. The scarf looks fairly easy, so I'm like, okay, um, I kind of dig the whole braided headband thing and this, like, uh, whatever. But I thought, okay, maybe that's a good place for me to start, you know, like, getting the basic set. And I love that it comes with, like, a bunch of the goodies that I have no idea what any of them are for. I kind of have an idea, but it's still kind of foreign. So then since I got this, I do have some yarn here that, because <laughs> sometimes, um, I'm at Joann's and I'll see some yarn and I get to touching it and I'm like, Oh, it feels so nice. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a whole scarf made out of this yarn? And my mom's a knitter. And sometimes I fancy chucking the, the yarn at her and being like, make me something please. Um, but really what I typically think is, Oh, one day I'm going to learn knitting and this is the yarn that I'll use to, to do that. <laughs> um, but at the same time, since I'm not a knitter, I don't know how many skeins of yarn I need. Like if I'm buying one skein of yarn, can I make anything with that? Probably not, I'm thinking. So at the same time, I usually pump the brakes a little bit because I don't know how much I need. Well, I started thinking, okay, get yourself some fun yarn, you know, that's not super expensive, but it's fun that you can start practicing with. Well, I fell down a little bit of a rabbit hole because I found me some yarn and I'm like, oh my God, so yummy. So I'm gonna show you that and I'm trying not to bump you guys. Look how fun that is. And it's all my favorite colors. And it wasn't too terribly expensive. And I don't know if this is enough to do anything, but I think it'll be enough to start, you know, like just get an idea. Um, that and I thought one thing that would make me keep going is if it's all my favorite colors. That and I love me an ombre effect. Mm. 
And then I found this one and I'm like, oh. So I bought three of these suckers and it's so soft. This might be crap yarn. I have no idea. I'm not a knitter. You know, you might be all looking at that like, why are you buying that brand? It's crap, you know, but it feels nice and it looks nice. So I want a scarf that looks like that. And then there's this other color. Look at that. So fun. So yeah, I splurged a little bit. I think I got three of each of these just because I thought I don't want to, what if I make a sock and I finish a sock and I go to make the other one and run out of yarn and then they don't make it anymore. Like, see, this, this is why I don't let myself start other hobbies because I start hoarding <laughs> because I start thinking weird, anxious things like that. So anyways, don't expect to be seeing a shawl or any finished projects anytime soon. I'm going to start dabbling at my leisure. Maybe before the year ends, but I don't expect to do any finished projects. Maybe it'll be easier than I'm thinking. Who knows? But I'm not, I'm not expecting too much. I don't like putting these. This is for fun. I don't like putting pressure on myself with it, even though <laughs> you just listen to all the ways that I put pressure on myself. So anyways, I think I grabbed a few other things at Joann's then, but that was the, the basic gist of it. Okay. Now the fun thing, this came a few days ago and I was so excited. I ordered it before I left and I think I mentioned it in my last video. New Bella Filipina Mermaid, <sighs> Temptress of the Cursed Sea. Isn't she hot? Look at her. I love how creepy she is. Now, I love this fabric, but I don't love it for her. Like, it's just not, she's like purples and teals and she's got a lot of black hair. I love the darkness of the fabric. And, you know, I love the fabric. I'll probably get me some just because I like it. But I'm just not feeling it for her. And another really super cool thing about this chart. Um, you have five skin colors to pick from. Let me pull this out real quick. I guess the one featured on the cover is the gray variation, which I kind of like that just because it doesn't look human, which she's not human. So, um, kind of like... Um, that one Mirabila Lilith, the Labrador. She's got kind of that weird green, white skin tone, kind of zombie-ish. Okay, so you have choice of gray tone or original, fair tone, gold tone, tan tone, and black tone. And that's all listed on there. Isn't that cool? I think that's super cool. I love that. I would like that for more designs because I love options and choices. And... For everyone to feel included. That's awesome. She is super cool. I just keep staring at her. Um, fabric for her. Told you. I'm not sold on the cover. Um, I have this piece. But I don't know. I kind of want something that has a little bit more of a gothic look to it. So. And I'm thinking purple. But she does have a lot of purple in her. I don't have all of her colors yet. But I dug through my stash. And I came up with these. Funny, they're all purple. I mean, they could work, you know. But mainly, I would kind of like to stay away from, like, the typical turquoise blue water. Because she's of the cursed sea. So, I feel like the waters need to look tainted, you know. But she's got all these seafoam accents and this seafoam crystal ball thingy. So, I don't want to use that color because I want that to pop. Like, and I feel like these purples, I know these aren't all of them. And this one is, you know, cutting it close. But I feel like they kind of look pretty good. That and her hair is black. So I'm like, I want the fabric to be darker. But I got to be careful about going too dark. Because then her hair is not going to show up. So, um, and then I got, oh, and also I bought this chart from Leslie LaFleur. I told you the last video. If you're really into the Bella Filipina designs, mermaids, whatever. Follow the Bella Filipina, not Bella. <laughs> under the Sea Fabric page with Leslie LaFleur on Facebook, and you can get your hands on stuff quick. She also sent me a bead pack, which you know these are getting converted, and I'm pretty happy because I'm a lot of these beads have already converted, so I know what I'm going to use for them. There's a few little green crystals in there, too. I might play with some colors on those because I'm like, mm, don't know about that. And then I got two out of the three um, metallics. I think there's another purple one that goes on her, and I didn't have it in stash, so, which is odd. I have most of the purple metallics. 
But yeah, I'm excited about doing her. Not starting her right away because, again, I'm not sure fabric-wise what we're doing. I do have some fabric orders that are pending. And a few more that I'm going to order soon. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if I added more crystals to her as well. So... Oh, it's funny. This container that I've got this all stuck in, I had ordered a container like that, basically like this from this seller and she sent me the wrong one. So she's sending me the right one, but I still kind of like this one. I think the one I ordered said something like stitching, sh stitching shit or something like that. It had curse words on it too. So, <laughs> but so yeah, measure twice, cause, measure once, cuss twice. So there's that. Okay. And then this arrived today. Um, basically I got Hawaiian garden from the kit for Chatelaine from European cross stitch. I opened it. Uh, when Cindy sends them out, they're so nice. They're so beautiful. I love them. But I also, when I get them, sometimes can't help diving into them because they're so yummy. And this kit especially has a lot of silk and a lot of stuff in it. So I had to dig through it. That and I'm still kind of banging around what color I want to do this one on. So I wanted to kind of explore the silk so I could kind of get in my brain a little bit more where I want to go with fabric color. So I opened this and now it's a mess. <laughs> this is as good as I can get it put back together, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. But let me pull it out since I destroyed it anyways. I know you guys aren't going to get the full effect of this, but... There's a uh, volcanoes on this piece because Hawaii, hello. So there's lots of fire opals and there's some of these big honking cube beads. I'm not quite sure how, I, I like how dark these are. I might find an alternative for them and then these guys can go in the stash. Um, it's flipped around, but there's also a vitrol heart, crystal vitrol heart, which here, let me just pull it out. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about. There we go. Vitrol's rainbowy colors. Really cool. I think that's the central crystal. Not sure. Um, have some issues with my Chatelaine charts, by the way. Nothing to do with Chatelaine. It's, it's a me thing. It's a my tech thing. Um, I had mentioned in one of my previous videos that my laptop died, which is annoying because I bought it in March and it died three months later. <laughs> like, won't turn on, dead, nothing. I downloaded a couple Chatelaine charts onto that and downloaded them nowhere else. So I'm going to have to bug Ella and I feel so bad because she does so much for us already. But I didn't get anything printed because I can pretty much only print one Chatelaine chart and then I need to buy new printer ink. Oh my gosh, look at it. Isn't it glorious? I really love this color. I like it. Oh, I'm not going to show you everything just because, oh my God, we'll be here for days. But look, there's six skeins of black NPI. Wow. That's a lot. So got lots of metallics. Going to be a sparkly girl. So yeah, all these fun silks. That's a lot of silks. It's heavy too. So yeah, that's Hawaiian Garden. Fabrics. I was digging through them. Let me show you kind of where my brain is thinking. <laughs> That's the range. Not all these are big enough. Um, let's see, I think this piece might actually be big enough, but it's not opalescent, which is why this got vetoed for Rainforest Lace because I decided I wanted it opalescent. By the way, that's another piece I ordered. Um, this piece was for Rainforest Lace, but then I realized I need a full yard for that piece. So I sucked it up, closed my eyes and ordered it. It's a lot to buy a full yard. And I ordered this piece for it, <laughs> then decided, you know what? I really want opalescent. So then I ordered this piece and then realized, shit, I bought a half yard and I should have bought a full yard. And this piece is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. So who knows if the next piece I get is going to be what I want. And if it's not, mm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Please look like this or at least close enough to this. But I am thinking maybe this piece for Hawaiian Gardens. I think Hawaiian Gardens 
at least the same size, if not bigger. So I'll probably need a full yard. This is a full yard. This color would be cool, I think. There's a lot, I, it's got like blues and greens and that's kind of what I want because when I think of Hawaii, I think of jungle and ocean. So green for jungle, blue for ocean. And there's a lot of those colors in here, but I can't imagine doing this on white. And I also can't imagine doing it on black, especially if you saw six skeins of black MPI, I know. So, I don't know. There's probably some floss in there too that'll probably help me figure it out, but that's kind of where I'm thinking. I also was thinking this might be kind of fun doing like, I don't know, like a confetti type color where it's, it's subtle, you know, so that might work. Is this just a full yard? This looks like it could be a full yard and it's sparkly. I do think I want sparkly for Hawaiian garden. So yeah, not sure when that's going to get started, but rainforest lace is in line first and I got the fabric ordered. Hopefully it looks proper. If not, I might just be like, you know what? You're going on here and you're not going to be sparkly because I'm tired of buying fabric for it. Like uh, over it. Okay. All right. What we got next? So showed you my Chatelaine. Pretty much the next haul would be Clay by Kim's. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my whip, um, which is Autumn Dusk banner by Chatelaine Designs and I showed it to you guys last time and I had finished the there's five basically motifs in this and the central one or the third one is like kind of like her centers in her mandalas so if you're new to Chatelaine if you're intrigued and you want to dip your toe in these would be a good design to go for because it basically works just like the big mandalas but on a much smaller more bite-sized scale so i'm unrolling it just to give you guys kind of the full effect so i had finished this top part last time you guys saw me and i've got my little fox bead that's going to go there and now i've got this gorgeous central portion done oh look at that so sparkly and you can only really see that in videos you know, in pictures, like I took like a million pictures of this and put it on Instagram because none of them were showing the sparkle enough. I did play around with the crystals on here. Uh, namely, I replaced these guys. These are Fire Opal AB1. That's another crystal that I had ordered, AB1. I was thinking about those AB2s, but they were just a little too wild. Um, I switched these crystals. These were um, aquamarine, but the color was too pale. So I wanted a more vivid blue. So this is blue zircon AB2, I think. I switched, this was supposed to be four beads and these Aaronite AB times two just matched this blue and green thing going on too, too well. So I just couldn't resist. I also switched the central part. So this was supposed to be just beads, but I had this little flower dude and it, it was just too perfect. So I put him there instead of the four beads in the middle. And then I changed the colors of these bicones here and I kind of wanted to put cubes there at first because I had to angle all the bicones at a different angle and that kind of messed with my head a little bit but finally I was just like just close your eyes and do it <laughs> because I didn't want to have to wait to order the, the the cubes and the cubes are a little bit pricey so I got that part finished and I love it it's gorgeous and now I'm on to this part. And so this motif is really small. Look how small it is compared to this central part. So this, I feel like, won't take me too long. There is over one acorns in all of these spots. And speaking of acorns, I just got this little dude today. So this is a little autumn clay by Kim. And he's cool because his back is different. So usually when you get a clay by Kim, you get like a little clay back here. And then the color usually matches the dragon. Well, for this one, she did a laser cut acorn and it says 2021 and it's got her little initials. I thought, oh, that's cool. I like that. So yeah, I got him the last listing. She was posting these little fall dragons. He's got a needle on his face. <laughs> these little fall dragons, um, which, you know, he's like, he's got an acorn, he's got wheat, he's got kind of leaf colors and these fall colors. So I just call him like an autumn dragon. The listing before that, she did the Mandrakes, um, which I like Harry Potter, but I'm not a huge fan. So I was like, you know, I'm more into the dra her dragons, you know. So 
I, I was still in Florida when that listing went up and I kind of, I of course, you know, went to, you know, the listing just to see if she posted anything else. Cause sometimes she, you know, here's what is going up and then she puts other stuff in there. So I was kind of looking to see like, Oh, is there anything else in there? You know, other than the mandrakes and you know, there was a few tins and a few moth type things, but there was no dragons. So I was like, I'm just going to hold because uh, I like Harry Potter. I mean, I like it enough. I've read the books. I've seen the movies and I know I'm a Ravenclaw. But beyond that, like, mm, y'all can have the mandrakes. So, but the listing before that, that one was kind of noteworthy, <laughs> um, which I hope no one gets mad at me. But um, I was in Florida and Miami specifically. And <coughs> excuse me. I actually had forgotten about the listing, but I had set my alarm and me and my son were walking in the rain. We were awning hopping on our way to the art deco district. And it was, you know, nighttime. It was getting close to 8 a.m. And then my phone goes off. And as soon as I realized, I was like, oh my God. And I had like a 10% battery because I was using my phone to navigate. We were going to the art deco district and the phone goes off and I'm like, oh, fuck, <laughs> the clay by camp. That and um, she had posted, this was, she had posted the owls. She was doing the owl type dragons. And then she canceled her listings to renovate her office. So I was like, oh my God, the owls are going up. And I really like the owls. You know, I thought those were really cool. And I, sometimes I think that's why she got onto the mandrakes because it does make me think of Harry Potter a little bit. But, um... So I was like, ooh, yeah, cool. And so we're in Miami. It's pouring down rain. We're awning hopping, trying not to get wet. And then my phone goes off. So I'm like, we got a duck somewhere. <laughs> and I only had two bars for my Wi-Fi. So I thought, shit, this is going to be bad. Which I knew that for the trip. I knew, like, going on my trip, there was going to be two Clay by Kim listings. And I was at the mercy of wherever I was for Wi-Fi, you know. And long story short, I mean, I know it's already been a long story, but whatever. Um, I managed to grab two dragons in the pouring rain under an awning on a corner in Miami. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. Because when it hit 8 o'clock and I started playing the refresh game, I was playing that game a lot longer than I usually do. And I thought, oh, it's over. Everything's gone. <laughs> And so then the listing came up. She had posted the owls. But I'm scrolling through the first few pages. And what am I seeing? But these little guys. And when you hunt for Clay by Kim's, typically you are lucky if you get anything. And so I saw them and I really liked them. So I had to make a snap decision. Do I go for these or do I go for the owls? because usually you only have time for one. And I my collection is lacking in like oranges and yellow colors. And I really like them. They kind of scream Halloween to me in a weird way, even though she just listed them as a black and orange dragon. And I thought, screw it, I'm going for it and I'll accept it if I don't get a, a, an owl for it. You know, like that's just, that's just how the game goes. You know, like you either buy that now or you risk Lose, losing something later on. You might scroll on later and be like, oh my gosh, why didn't I get that? But that's just how it goes. So I got this guy and I was super happy about it. Yay. But then I'm like, okay, I'm still going to try for the owl. So I'm going to try. Don't think it's going to happen. I feel like it's been too long because, you know, I had the lag with everything loading. So by the time I got to the owls, there were a couple that were sold out, you know, because that as the listing goes on, you'll start seeing things are sold out. So I found one that wasn't listed as sold out and I got him. I was stunned. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm like, it's been so long since I've caught two dragons. Like sometimes I'll catch a dragon and like a non dragon needle minder, like in one go. I mean, that doesn't happen too often, but it, it does. So to get two dragons with the diminished Wi-Fi in the rain in Miami on a corner, I was like, speechless and and i don't know and i think this owl's so cute because like it, he kind of looks like he's wearing a costume 
<laughs> I love the little beak on his head. And I do think these guys, like, I think when she finished the owl, she had leftover eyes. So that's where these came from, you know, like just no clay left behind. I thought that was kind of cute. I also love how his tail, it reminds me of like a toasted marshmallow because it goes from like light to dark to black. And he's very textured too. So he's cute. So yeah, I managed to grab two clay by Kim's while I was on my trip in Florida and I was very pleased with that. And by the time I got home and my mail was delivered, there were my, my lovely little dragons. So it was a very nice homecoming. So yeah, that was awesome. And she is still doing fall type dragons right now. Like she's got some pumpkin ones going up and I'm gonna try to get one so hard. I will be so sad if I don't get one. I mean, I guess I got this one that kind of looks, it's not pumpkin-y, but it's fallish and it's orange and yellow and it's got eyes on it, you know, like, but I really want a jack, like, cause she's got like little curly, like pumpkin vine thingies on them. And I'm like, it's super cute. She also posted like another autumn, like this guy here on uh, eBay. I'll give you guys. Let me just pull all of them out and give you guys a better close up. So, which here's that little acorn back. I think that's cute. Um, she posts two of them on eBay and that's kind of one way I do Intel when I am anticipating her listings is I see what she's posting on eBay and she did not post these until after the listing. So like you wouldn't have known that they were going up surprises us sometimes but she's got um a pumpkin on ebay now and another fall like autumn one but it's kind of different it doesn't have the acorn and it has more like leaves like fall leaves so yeah here's my three latest i think they're very cute and then here you can kind of see where the themes go with the backs so but yeah very cute Funny, all these guys aim to the right. <laughs> so, yeah, these are cute. I love them. Um, for future videos, I've told you guys I'm going to do a Clay by Kim tour at the end of the year because when she starts doing the Yule Dragons again, that's when I've hit my year mark. And so I'm going to do a video on my Clay by Kim collection then. And I'm hoping I can get some fun autumn dragons before that video. I know I'm very thankful for all the ones I've had. I've had a very lucky year. Like when I think about this time last year, how many I had versus how many I have now. Like if I had known, like, oh my gosh, my mind would be blown. So, but speaking of future videos, um, few things I'm thinking about doing. I might do a Hardinger video, like one of my This Is How I Do It videos, uh, like beginner Hardinger. That might be fun, I thought. Um, I'd maybe do a fabric parade if anybody wants to see that because uh, I've got a lot of fabric now and I do need to get rid of some. So it's like maybe that can turn into kind of like a giveaway or something, maybe around the holidays or something. Um, then I would like to do like a reintroduction video because I've got more subscribers now than I did last time that, and I kind of have a better idea of what I'm tr trying to do with this channel, you know, than I, when I first started. When I first started, I was just winging it. Not that I'm <laughs> not winging it now. I totally am. But um, I thought I'd do like a reintroduction, you know, just like, this is what this channel does. This is what I tend to stitch, you know, like, so people can like figure out if they want to watch or not. Cause like my original intro, it was very short, but man, the quality really sucked. <laughs> so I feel like I should do like a new, more modern one or something like that. I also need to not necessarily in video, but I need to revisit my 2021 goals because, um, I think the 2022 goals are going to be coming up at the end of the year. So I need to start kind of assessing how I did this past year. I know I did not get as much done as I wanted to, but I also started a lot more projects than I thought I was going to. So, oh, I almost forgot. I've got a happy dance. What the hell? What's wrong with me? I posted it on my Instagram. This was one that I started right before I left and I considered taking it with me on the trip, but ended up not taking any stitching. So let me introduce you to... Banana Shark. 
banana shark do 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 I've been singing that the whole time isn't he so cute I just love him and this is that little piece of well I cut it in half this was a uh, an extra cut cutting of the weird piece of da Vinci that's way more purple than da Vinci, da Vinci usually is and I just thought you know he's yellow so I wanted to do him on a contrasting color and it's like He's a banana shark. It's not like I'm going to do him on a logical color like blue for the ocean. Like, <laughs> So I just thought I'd have fun with it. Then I wanted to use up parts of this scrap. I'm not sure how I'm going to frame him. I'm thinking he'd look good in an oval. And I want more of the fabric showing. I also adjusted the back stitch. Like he was supposed to just be back stitched in all black. But I felt like it was a little stark. So I did the eye in black. And then I did the outside in like the darkest yellow color. And then I did the fins and like the areas that need a little extra definition with like this brown color. And then I did his mouth in the pink. So, but yeah, he's super cute. And I posted the links for that in my last video, but I'll, I'll post a link in this one too, for where you can get this on Etsy. It's a PDF and there's lots of other little fun sharks designs. So but he's cute and he's kind of nostalgic for me, you know, cause I saw lemon sharks on my trip. So it's like, yeah, he's a banana shark. So it'd be cool if she did a lemon shark. But yeah, she did a nurse shark. So <laughs> why not do a lemon shark? But yeah, sorry, I almost forgot that. Um, I like to borrow Kyle Reichemeyer from Stitching and Sounds uh, tradition of doing a shot. I don't have any alcohol with me, but I do have my Blackberry Izzy. <laughs> so happy dance for the banana shark. <sighs> There's my shot. I don't drink alcohol much. I can't help it. But maybe next time I do a happy dance, I'll have like a glass of wine or something like that. We'll see. Or I could break the Jägermeister out too. That might work too. But so anyways, I think that's pretty much it. So um, got some future videos coming out soon. Um, got a lot of stuff going on the next couple weeks. I've My October, I'm doing a lot of training and stuff like that. Um, briefly, kind of what's going on for me next year. I'm doing a lot of traveling. <laughs> Also, um, I basically have had a consult for getting braces because my teeth ain't straight and I want them to be. So, um, you probably won't be seeing that on me in the next video because my next consult's in like November or something like that. That and I've got to get some teeth removed, you know, in the meantime, not looking forward to that. But, uh, just thought I'd throw it out there because down the road you'll probably see me with some braces on. So that's the thing that's going to happen. I also need to get my hair cut and recolored and stuff like that. So that might change by the next video. Um, and then I'm going to Costa Rica official. I bought my plane ticket. It was super cheap. I got it for $230. I was like, I can't turn that down. So got my tickets bought for Costa Rica. I'm doing a CEU training class for massage therapy down there. Um, I also added a few extra days on there so I can have some beach time and some jungle time, which are my two favorite things. Um, and then maybe possibly going with a friend to Aruba in May. Um, I also am in the scheduling process for some tattoo work for a guy that's in Texas. Um, we're looking at like summer for that. And I'm thinking there was somewhere else I might end up going next year. I don't know. I can't remember. I've been talking about wanting to go to Salem again, like in the fall, but... We'll see if that happens. That's kind of a lot of travel anyways. So yeah, we'll see if that happens. But anyways, so yeah, that's kind of how my year next few months is shaping up. I'll still have time to do videos and stuff like that. Um, I'll probably also like, since I've finished rearranging the room a little bit, I know I said many, many videos ago that I was going to do a craft layer tour. I still plan on doing that. I filmed the before, which I need to go and watch again, because that was kind of a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm almost ready to do the after. So that's probably a thing that's going to happen at some point. So anyways, that's pretty much the end of the video and what I got for you. I have more haul coming, so I will have another video before. Too terribly long, probably mm, two weeks or so like usual. That's kind of the, the system that's been working. Because I like having enough done that I can show you guys. Hey, look, I did stuff, you know, since you saw me last. So... Um, check out my Instagram. It's also Sharky Stitcher if you want to stay more up to the minute on what I'm doing because I tend to post there a little bit more regularly just because it's easy to put a picture up. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.